Hello everyone and welcome to the History Unicorn, Reddit Finds. Today we are exploring the world of cryptids, Bigfoot, Hatman, and other creatures, from the subreddits. r slash paranormal encounters, r slash supernatural encounters, r slash Bigfoot, and r slash cryptids. Links to the original posts are in the description below. Let's dive in and find out exactly what is lurking in the woods. To set the scene. I was living with my mother, as well as two brothers, ages 12 and 15, me being the youngest, 8 turning 9. And I live in Australia, where there is a belief that if you mistreat children, they will be visited, and sometimes taken, by the Featherfoot. Okay. So I was young, and I don't really remember much from that time. Because, unfortunately, I have repressed a lot of memories. We had no father around, and mum was always either intoxicated or UTI. So she always had lots of guys coming over to visit, at any hour. On this particular day, I don't remember many details. All I know is that my grandmother and grandfather dropped me off at mum's house, after going ice skating. I was sore from falling over a lot, and exhausted from the trip. So I walk inside my front glass sliding door, into the lounge where I announce my arrival to no response. I shrug my shoulders and lay down on the couch, with my chocolate milk, and basically pass right out after turning the TV on. I wake up almost as if I was struck by lightning, because I'm like sitting up before I realize I'm awake. Heart pounding and drenched in sweat. I take a few breaths, and feel like I've been running for the whole time I was sleeping. I rub my eyes and can hear my TV playing. The Men in Black theme song, I remember giggling at the weird worm aliens, in the video. I can't remember the time, all I know is that it was dusk and the sun was just finishing its descent. I watched for a little while longer, then I stood and started turning to go to the kitchen, when I was stood frozen, standing around 5 feet behind the glass door, looking right into my eyes. There was an almost 7 foot figure standing in my front yard. Not moving an inch, still staring right in my eyes. I yell, mum's not here right now, so f off. Thinking, or hoping, Maybe it was one of her friends. I felt cold and shivers ran up my spine as a car drove down the street, lighting up the humanoid. I could see he had wings like an angel's. Four of them shining reflecting the light of the car, and was covered in pitch black feathers. It was at this point my heart sank. I fell to my knees and just started bawling my eyes out. I cried for what felt like hours, wiping the tears from each eye separately never taking my eyes off it, until it was swallowed by the dark of night. Sliding back until I was flush against the wall, I just sat there staring at the darkness behind the glass door, until my family came back. After turning on the lights, of course, now that I think back on it. I don't know why I started crying. Inside I just felt a sadness so heartbreaking I can't even explain it. I've never seen it again. Also, it is the only paranormal experience I've had. Let me know, in the comments below. What do you think was looking in the window at OP? I live close to a lake. For reference, I'm about 10 to 15 minutes away from town. I stay with my mom and dad because of health issues. I also live in Illinois. This plays into effect of what I'm going to tell. A little backstory. My parents, since they moved here, have found footprints as in no shoes, big footprints in the snow and mud. Weird noises, as well. I moved back home, with them after they had been here a year. The first night I was back, I walked with my mom to the chicken coop. To get some eggs with her, and we both heard knocking and weird noises from the woods. The woods are about 200 feet from the coop, and the coop about 200 feet from our house. About two weeks after I got here, the first snow hit and I went to get the eggs with my dog, a Shiba Inu. I had her on a leash, and she kept looking into the woods and growling. Mind you, she never growls or anything. She's an all-around sweet and goofy dog. Well, once I got to the coop, I found about five footprints in the snow. All barefoot and was too big to be any one of my family's, as well as a broken egg on the ground, outside of the coop. About two months later, we found that out that even though all ten chickens were laying. There would only be about four to six eggs a day. 
this is still going on. We now have 14 chickens and will only have 5 to 8 eggs now. Back to what's been happening. About a year later, about the beginning of October of last year, I was sitting out on the gazebo. It was about 6 o'clock at night, dark out, and I was reading a book on my phone. Enjoying the weather. On that side of my house, there's a horse pin. And right behind the house is a vast field, with cows. As well as the garden, with a tree beside it. I heard some noise close to the garden and horse pin. So I closed my phone, and looked up. I noticed the horse was not out, nor were the cows, but behind tree. Which isn't that thick, there was something peeking out from behind it. Me, not thinking, called out thinking my dad was trying to prank me. I was very wrong, so. So. Very wrong. A big humanoid, type creature, covered in fur took off running to the cow field. Jumped the electric fence. I could hear the steps it made and the jump. The electric fence is over four and a half feet tall, mind you. So I couldn't even think of anyone who could jump it. I ran inside and told my dad something run into the cow field. We both went out with flashlights, since the cow field didn't have any lights near it. And to the side of that cow field, is the woods closest to the chicken coop. We saw nothing for a while after this. Now April, of this year, we put up a big fence, in the backyard for my dog and my parents' dog to go out. And for us to not worry about any raccoons or coyotes trying to get them. About, mid-April my dog needed to go to the potty outside, it was dark already and at the time, the back floodlight wasn't working. So I grabbed my big flashlight and checked to make sure no skunks were out close to the yard. I was shining it around and saw a yellow eye shine, but it wasn't a small one. It was big and at least seven feet off the ground, close to the chicken coop. My dog started growling and trying to get outside. I slammed the door, and went inside. Then in May, we were puppy sitting for a friend, for a few days at our house. It was about 3 am and the puppy needed to go out, so I did what I always do. Even with the floodlight, that turns on for movement. I use my flashlight to check for eye shine. I see over by the wood, the same eyes and this time the moon was full and out. I could see the fur a slight red brown again, and he was looking straight at me. I ran inside with the puppy, in my arms still. The next day, around sunset, my mom took my dog, hers, and the puppy into the backyard to use the bathroom. And my mom looks over to the same area, and thinks it's a cow that's out by the fence. And doesn't even think till she looked again, and lets out a... What in the world? I was in the garage, getting a dog toy for the girls to play with, and I came out. And I look over, the sun is still out. And this thing is in the front of the tree, about 30 feet from the end of the fence, kinda hiding by the brush pile, just staring at us. We quickly grabbed the girls, and booked it inside. Having my dad go out to see what it was. This thing, the time I got a good look at it, had a flat face standing on two legs, reddish brown fur, over seven feet tall. It scared me with how close it was, and the fact it was there, and we didn't notice it. For the past three nights though, I've heard knocking and this inhuman screaming, at around 3 am. I've seen the floodlight, by the coop, also on and see something hiding behind the coop. I'm beyond scared, the screams are so close. It sounds like it's outside my window, on the second floor of my house. I don't know what it is, but I needed to get this out there. Maybe you could help. I've heard of Bigfoot in the area, but I don't think one would stalk my house. I'm not a skeptic at all, but this is one of the first time something like a supernatural creature has shown up. You may not believe this, but this is happening to my house. I plan to put a trail camera out soon. I'll update, if something happens. In the comments below, let me know what you think about OP's encounter. What do you think is stalking OP's house and eating their eggs? This is my first post, so bear with me. Let me begin with some background info. My boyfriend, best friend, and I are from a tiny town in Pennsylvania. We were invited to spend a week with our best friend's grandparents in Michigan, who live in the forest. There are trails that stretch for miles, and a giant lake in the middle of it. Where we have only seen swans chilling in. The biggest problem in these forests are ticks. Right, we arrive in Michigan, on Saturday. Today is Thursday and last night, 
Wednesday night, around 1 a.m., my boyfriend, Z, and best friend, B, and I, were smoking a joint in front of the forest, near the trail entrance. We wanted to stargaze and watch deer, plus we weren't allowed to smoke on B's grandparents' property. During the beginning of us setting up, the wind was blowing against our backs, as we faced the forest. We were joking around, trying to smoke while shivering. And just having a nice conversation while standing around. We stood in a diagonal line, and heard rustling. I jokingly said, what if it's a skinwalker? Our senses were heightened, because we didn't want B's grandparents to know we left in the middle of the night. They're old and old-fashioned, so when they don't know we're home or not, they will spam B's phone asking where he is. After B checked his phone over 10 times, him and I heard a female voice in the distance, directly where their house was. We were about 200 feet away from the property. B heard his grandmother's voice clearly. Very clearly, calling out our names in order. B, M, Z. Come inside? This was unusual, because before we left the house, all the lights were off and they were asleep, by that time. We made sure. After the voice cut off, we heard more very loud rustling in the woods, right in front of us. Like 10 feet. And it sounded like heavy footsteps trampling through the brush. We were silent for a couple minutes, listening to the sounds of the dead leaves being crunched, and it sounded like someone was trying to watch us through the trees. It was louder than what a deer would make, or a bear. There was no noises, growling, or anything. Just the instance of something large walking around. The wind also did a 180 change of direction. It was now blowing against the front of us, instead of our backs. B immediately turned his phone flashlight on and yelled. Hey! About three times. During the yelling and pauses, the footsteps quickened and seemed hesitant to leave the area, in front of us. It sounded like two feet, not four like an animal, and it started to run towards the lake. Before this, I should mention that the sounds of the swans honking were nice and peaceful. Then, when the entity or whatever it was began to run away scared, the swans were shouting and yelling. They were absolutely going crazy. The lake was far from us, and the water level had fallen. Bushes and random trees were in the way, before you could reach the water. But when the entity ran towards it, we heard the splashing as if it was right next to us. It was that loud. So loud, we could hear each trudge through the water individually. Our fight or flight kicked in, and we all kept our flashlights on towards the forest. I checked behind us, opened all the car doors, so we could dart in, if needed. And kept talking at a loud volume to keep whatever it was away. Once they were in the water, the swans were screaming and seemed to leave. The sounds of trudging through water died quickly, and everything was silent again. We left immediately and went home. All of us were quiet and tired. It was like we didn't even get the affect of THC because of how scared we felt. What the F was that? Here are some of the comments, from this post. Alternative Cell 668 commented. I also live in Michigan, and most likely it was a W. They're known to be in the Michigan woods. OP responded to Alternative Cell 668. I'm pretty sure it was stalking us again last night. Just got informed, by my boyfriend that I was talking in my sleep. I kept saying, I want to go home. I just want to see what they do. He's by the bathroom door. And I've never mumbled clear words before in my sleep. I am naturally a very spiritual person, I can connect with different types of spirits and entities, so I'm just a ball of confusion right now. This is Mockingj2020 responded to Alternative Cell 668. What? Yikes! I've spent time in the woods, at night in Michigan. I guess it's good that my spouse isn't outdoorsy like my ex was. Alternative Cell 668 responded to this is Mocking J 2020. They can be located wherever it's cold but New England, Canada, Michigan. Pretty much any state with a really cold winter, they can be there. I'm not saying that's for sure what it was, I'm just saying they're known to be here in Michigan. Frog 2 also commented. Definitely a skinwalker, when Digo's more focus on getting inside someone's head. To drive them either insane or into cannibalism, so probably not that. Skinwalkers on the other hand, do exactly what you just described. I've had one encounter, very brief and I was young and didn't know what it was at the time. And ironically it was in a haunted Michigan forest, but anyways it tried leading me away from the group I was in, calling my name in my mother's voice saying. 
Emily come here. I have a surprise for you. 11 year old me was smart and new mom was at work and didn't follow it. Skinwalkers try to mimic something or someone you have interest or find comfort in, which is typically why the hide is crying babies, pets, animals, or someone you know. They lure you and then attack, once they've got you where they want you. You did the right thing, also if something similar happens again, their weakness is fire so maybe use your lighter, or if you have a bonfire or something. That typically scares them off. OP responded to Frog 2. Thanks a bunch for being super helpful. So sorry you went through that. I'm also glad 11 year old you was smart. We are living Sunday morning, and heading back to Pennsylvania. I'm gonna cleanse myself with some crystals, crazy pure Michigan experience. Frog 2 responded to OP. Hey, no problem. And it's fine that was a while ago, I'm also really sorry you had to go through that, as well. Also that's a good idea, to cleanse yourself too. I hope that didn't ruin all of Michigan for you though. Because there are some really pretty parts without demonic beings. Let me know, in the comments below. What do you think OP experienced? Was it a Wendigo, Skinwalker, Bigfoot, or something a little more mundane? This happened last night, it's been taken down thrice. And the weird things are still happening. Please help. Okay I, female 16, 17 in a couple weeks, need some help. Anybody out there, that knows what could have done this? It's 8.30 PM, in the northern United States and it's very dark out. I heard a strange noise coming from outside, because my window was open. It sounded like a baby crying, but my mom, female 49, described it as somebody groaning, but it didn't sound quite right. It was almost like uncanny valley, but audio. When I went downstairs, to ask who made that noise, my mom and brother were standing outside on the deck. Door wide open looking terrified. My brother, male 10, went back inside and I went outside with my mom, to watch my dog. She looked really scared, shaking, leg up, tail between her legs. Staring directly across the street. She didn't move for 7 minutes, just staring. After the initial noise, somebody shouted, shut up. And that's when we knew it wasn't just us. Suddenly, a bunch of dogs started barking, but then abruptly stopped after a couple minutes. Then, as if something was trying to fit in, a dog started barking. Three barks. It sounded like a dog, but also didn't. It sounded very obviously imitated, and it also sounded like it was coming from just across the fence, but nothing was there. We all went inside, and started locking every door and every window. Closing all the blinds. My mom told us, she was gonna protect us no matter what. My brother is sleeping with my dad tonight. I am sleeping with my window closed and locked tonight. Can somebody please tell me what they think it could be, so I could do some research? I need to know what I'm up against. Thank you for reading. And please, do not take this story as a joke or a ruse. This just happened and my family and I are very worried. I have psychosis and seeing that my family is also scared and heard everything, shows me that I'm not crazy. Please help. Here are a few comments, from this post. Xylorgos commented. Could it be local wildlife, like raccoons? The first time I ever heard raccoons mating, it scared the hell out of me. I thought it sounded like a Tasmanian devil in a fit of rage. I've heard that sometimes foxes sound like a woman screaming, and coyotes, and mountain lions make weird noises too. Depending on where you live, in Northern American, you could have a new family of critters in your neighborhood that you haven't heard before. More and more animals that typically live in the woods, away from humans, find themselves somewhere in the burbs looking for a new home. I would check into that sort of thing first. OP responded to Xylorgos. The wildlife in my neighborhood is squirrels, but other strange things happened today, that just made things worse. Alpha Wolf 822 responded to OP. What do you mean, made it worse? Zlexile 639 suggested. Please keep me updated. Sounds very Skinwalker-ish. OP responded to Alexile 639. Will do, that was my first thought. Comprehensive Emu 972 responded to OP. That's what I thought too, after I read your initial post. 
Honestly, it wouldn't surprise me. We'll keep you all in my prayers. An under priestess love advised. I would combine blessed salt, black pepper, and rue or iron filings together with prayers. Then sprinkle a bit over your back door, all windows, front door, etc. As you sprinkle, pray for protection. That will keep a lot out. Also, highly advise you get some good cameras. Let me know what you think, in the comments below. What do you think OP encountered? Was it a skinwalker, or a known animal? The other night, while driving home from my mother-in-law's house, we were passing some open fields. Most of the time, while passing the fields, we try to spot animals. Deer, fox, raccoons, etc. But that night I saw something that scared me so much that my brain went into what I can only describe as shock. It took a full minute or more for me to understand what I saw. My husband, seeing me dazed out, kept asking me what was wrong. What had happened? I couldn't speak. I just looked at him. What I saw was. Well, it was a thing. Pale and long. Climbing up the ditch to the field. Its body was twisted and branch-like, but bone-looking. Its head was eyeless, but its mouth was wide open, like it was screaming. I heard no sound, as the windows were up, but it was moving. Crawling. Reaching. My husband wanted to go back and look for it, but I begged him not to. I didn't want to see it again, and the fear it put into me stayed in my mind like a steam stuck in your throat. I've tried to explain this creature to a few people. And the looks or comments are mainly rude or unbelieving. So I've come here for advice or maybe someone else has seen it. Here are some of the comments, from this post. Curious Kitty 999 commented. One of my relatives had seen a similar thing and she called it a twist in a rake. AZ Stargazer questioned. Rake creature. OP responded to AZ Stargazer. I've looked it up, and it may be what I saw, but it was so gnarled and laying how it was. It's hard to say. Maybe it was wounded. Maybe stalking something. Or maybe it didn't want to be seen, so it was crawling. I'm not sure, but I still get chills when I think about it. Mind you, I'm not stranger at all to the paranormal, but that thing scared the hell out of me. Southern Formal 127 also commented. I live in East Tennessee, and I too have seen the same thing you're describing. It's the rake. I live out in the country. So a trip to the good old Dollar General was about a 15 minute ride, one way. Which isn't too bad considering, at the time, I lived out in BFE on 43 acres, that were mostly forest. It's extremely dark at night, on these backcountry roads. No street lights, and you'll maybe see one or two other vehicles traveling also. I was on my way home from the Dollar General, and on speaker phone with my friend. We're chatting away, and as I was approaching a curve in the road. I see this long, lanky, knobbly looking thing, streak across the two lane road in front of me. It was this awful pasty white color, and a black void for a mouth. It was tall, and it was fast. In mid-conversation I yelled. What the hell was that? OMFG. My friend on the phone, is asking me what happened. What did I see? So I describe it to her and she exclaimed. OMG you've just seen a rake. That is a rake. I hadn't heard of one, at that time and when I got home, I immediately do a Google search on this creature and see images people have captured of this thing. Sure enough. It was exactly what I saw. Sounds like you saw one too. OP responded to Southern Formal 127. That's amazing. I'm so glad it's not just me. I live in upstate New York, so apparently they are pretty widespread. It's so nice to know I'm not alone. Southern Formal 127 responded to OP. You're definitely not alone. There's a show called Paranormal Caught on Camera. And they have an episode where other people have encountered these things, and have it recorded. There's many. You should check it out. Plus, there's videos on YouTube showing footage of them. We live in the age of technology, and just about everything is on camera and uploaded to social media. Let me know what you think, in the comments below. Was it a rake or a crawler, or something more mundane? Are you enjoying the encounters so far? If yes, hit the like button. 
If you want to see more in our cryptid or any of our other series, hit the subscribe button, and the notification bell, to never miss a future video. If you would like your encounter featured on a future video, you can send it to contacthistoryunicorn at gmail.com. You can submit anonymously, or I can give you a shout out, just let me know your preference in the email. Share in the comments, what you think about the encounters we've discussed so far. Okay, I posted this several years ago, in another sub. But I think it fits here. I'll try to make it as short as possible. Here's my story. This took place in the early 90s. I was around 10 years old. My father bought several hundred acres near Loosedale, Mississippi, about an hour from Mobile, Alabama. Where we lived, in the late 80s. The nearest paved road, from the start of our land was at least a 20 minute drive, so it was pretty secluded. The nearest neighbor, was an old couple in their 70s, about 5 miles west of our land. Shortly after purchasing the land, my dad built a small lake, about a quarter mile north of our cabin, which he also built. Aside from the clearing, the cabin was on and the lake, the land was covered in thick woods. You could also get to the lake by a walking trail, which ended at the southeast corner of the lake, where a fishing pier was located. The lake itself was surrounded by woods and there was a dam on the north end. One October morning, I decided not to go with my parents and little sister into town. I instead wanted to go fishing, while listening to the Bama game, on the radio. I had my loyal and unusually large Airedale Terrier with me. I had been fishing, on the little pier, for about 15 minutes when I started feeling very nervous, for whatever reason. The hair on my neck was standing, and I started getting nauseous. I scanned the tree line, on the west side, across from me and spotted a silhouette in the trees. The lake itself was roughly the size of a football field, so it wasn't that far across, 50 to 70 meters. I thought my eyes were deceiving me, and then the silhouette moved. I was absolutely scared stiff, but was able to keep calm. I could tell that whatever it was, the color was uniform. Dark brown or black, and it was very tall. I casually faced north, but kept my eyes glued to the figure. It slowly moved from tree to tree, almost facing me. It was making its way toward me. My dog started to low growl, and that broke my paralysis. I set my pole down, and started walking up the pier, to the trail. I didn't want to look over my shoulder, for whatever reason, and when I got to the trail. I ran as fast as my legs could carry me, back to the cabin. My dog stayed with me, the entire time. I don't know if it followed. When I got to the cabin, I got my dad's shotgun and waited by the biggest window. Eyes glued to the woods. My family returned home, and I didn't tell them. I was afraid they may restrict my explorations, but it didn't matter. Because I never felt comfortable there again. We sold the land in the late 90s, and got a beach house in Gulf Shores. I didn't mind. I'll answer any questions y'all may have. Here are a few comments, from this post. Oh my gosh Bigfoot commented. Interesting encounter. And frightening. With numerous reports out there, involving young folks. There's an idea or theory out there that squatches are especially fascinated with kids. It sure seems that way. Maybe it just wanted to see you more closely, but meant no harm. I wonder if the new owners had any experiences. Gabriel Bathory responded to oh my gosh Bigfoot. Children are way less likely to be able to injure or kill one. Likely not even try and just run away instead. So either curious ones are trying for a safer close observation of a human, or they have nefarious intent. Hey look over there. It's a people McNugget. Beyond Hatred responded to oh my gosh Bigfoot. I wonder if maybe Sasquatch have the same instinct to care for little creatures that humans have. Even if it's not their own species. OP responded to oh my gosh Bigfoot. Not that I know of. Stupidized me also commented. It's interesting that you felt nervous and nauseous before you saw it. If I get a feeling of something ominous, some kind of potential danger near me, I always take it seriously. OP responded to stupidize me. I think the nausea came from my fear. Stupidize me responded to OP. I agree. The nausea might have kicked in before you saw anything, because your body's nervous system was already reacting. Armed Squatch chimed in. We have been hit with a overwhelming sense of dread and loss. 
followed by the shakes so bad, fine motor skills were out of the question. Another time, it was bowel loosening fear that surpassed any firefight. We had been enduring Iraq and Afghanistan. Both times, right before we caught movement, at the next tree line or down a ridge. But close by, 100 meters. Bear with me for a second. My body thinks it's our ancient, hardly ever used lizard brain. That keys up on creatures like a squatch. That have been around for a thousand years. I'm not sure if it's that or infrasound, but I have no doubt you had a legit encounter. I had a buddy, growing up, that had a monster-sized Airedale compared to normal-sized. That could have been the reason he stayed as far back as he did. OP responded to Aunt Squatch. Yeah, Bully was bigger than a German Shepherd. He used to crush armadillos and leave them on our back porch. Aunt Squatch responded to OP. I would not be surprised if your pup was the deterrent. One night, at our delta spot just at dusk my Great Dane, Panzer, Bluff charged the woodline, with a growl from the depths of his chest, and all his hair standing straight up. He came back with his tail between his legs, shaking in fear. That night we got the orbs and all kinds of tree breaks, around the campsite. We had set up in a spot that blocked easy access to a creek. That had large pools of resting salmon. I think we spoiled what had been a dinner plan, for a group. It was a long night with Panzer keyed up in the tent, and very stressed out. Around 2 a.m., we started getting the owl hoots. That sound like they are from 200 pound owls. And way way too low from both sides of our campsite. Long night. The only thing we didn't get was any rocks or pine cones being thrown at our trucks or tents. We spent hours, the next day, looking for footprints and the tree breaks. And found nothing. Let me know what you think, in the comments below. Do you think OP encountered a Bigfoot? Also, do you think OP's dog acted as a deterrent to keep OP safe? I truly believe that the primate exists. And I have actually had an interesting event take place, when I was much younger. Growing up in Wisconsin, I remember hearing stories of the elusive primate. And I always wondered if the stories I heard were real, or was it all Harry and the Hendersons? I was about 10 years old, and was visiting my cousin. In a thick forested area of south central Wisconsin. It was the dead of winter, and about a foot of snow was on the ground. My cousin and I loved the woods outdoors, and would never miss an opportunity to wander the forests near their property. The state had groomed ATV, snowmobiling trails, we would walk on all year round. That were fairly close to my aunt and uncle's property. On this particular day, we were walking the trails, and came to the road where we always walked back towards the home. We were walking on the oncoming side of the desolate country road, and noticed massive barefoot footprints. I gazed down at the tracks, and could tell immediately that these were similar to human feet, but much bigger in length and width. There was also interesting characteristics that are not found in human footprints. Looking at the tracks, I looked up and watched them trail off into the deep and dense forest. We then walked to the other side, to see if the tracks came across the other side. And sure enough, they did. The terror was unfathomable, as a young kid. And I remember immediately sprinting towards my cousin's home, in our snow pants and heavy winter jackets, about a quarter of a mile from where we were. We never saw whatever it was that made the footprints. Still, to this day, my cousin and I, cannot come up with a rational reason on the situation other than an elusive bipedal primate, that is very intelligent. I will never be convinced, nor will my cousin, that a size 14 to 18 barefoot person was walking around, the middle of nowhere in one foot of snow. On a freezing cold Wisconsin, 10 to 20 degree, winter day. Here are some of the comments, from this post. The real Blabaloo commented. What in this story implies very intelligent? I believe you found footprints, but what does that have to do with the level of intelligence of, whatever left them? OP responded to the real Blabilu. I don't say that lightly. I do say the creature is intelligent, by avoiding direct human contact or interference. For centuries, Native American cultures have seen the creature. And there are stories of this creature hunting native children in Northern California. I say the primate is intelligent, because it seems to have the ability and wherewithal to know to avoid humans yet hunt humans up until possibly today. 
The point of hunting humans is passed by generations. I also suggest that there may be a correlation of missing people to the primate. Though I say that as a theory, we consider dolphins, whales, and many other primate species as intelligent. Would it not be intelligent, if a primate is able to avoid capture or being hunted, especially over millennia? The real Blabaloo responded to OP. In your post, you said we cannot come up with a rational reason for the situation. Finding Bigfoot tracks in the snow. Other than an elusive bipedal primate that is very intelligent. I'm just saying that footprints in the snow don't imply any particular intelligence, and it sounded like you were saying they did. I don't have a problem with the idea of Bigfoots being intelligent. I'm just saying that this isn't evidenced by the event you described. The way you phrased it sounded like you just tacked on, that is very intelligent without justifying it. OP responded to the real Blabaloo. Correct? As I state, it without a doubt did not belong to any human. Therefore, that leaves one theory for us to fall back on. That is a bipedal primate. Again, this primate would have to be a highly intelligent being to avoid hunting and capture. The capture of this creature would not change humanity or anything. But, to avoid capture or being hunted for millennia would make it an extremely intelligent being. Not sure where the disconnect is. Radc42 also commented. A manager I worked with said as a kid, he smelled something really nasty. Looked up I saw a giant hairy thing side hilling above him. He said Bigfoot exists, period. OP responded to Brad C42. I no longer live in Wisconsin, and now am in Washington state. I have lived here for over 20 years now. I am now terrified of the woods, which is something I forgot to mention in my op. I know stories can be just that for someone on the outside reading. But, I actually have a little brother, who experienced something here. While off-roading on the ORV trails, near Mount Rainier. I remember the fear in his eyes, when telling the story to me and just how terrified he was of what he saw. Even as an older brother to him, I sort of look up to him, for how well maintained his adult life has been. The story. They got done off-roading for the day. And set up camp deep in the national forest, on top of a mountain, in the foothills of Rainier. He was getting ready for bed and went off in the woods to take his bedtime leak. And as he finished up, he said he smelled something absolutely foul. He said he then noticed something watching him about 10 feet away, standing near a tree he was using to relieve himself. Whatever it was, was massive and towered over him, 6 foot 1. He said he didn't hang around to see what it was, and ran back to camp about 20 yards away. Again. My brother is the honest Abe of the family and never embellishes anything. The true fear and terror of whatever he saw haunts him to this day, and he will no longer go in the woods either. Nature is scary, and I truly do not doubt my brother, nor my own experience. Therefore, there is something bipedal in the woods of North America, that is far bigger than any human. I hope one day science can give my brother some peace of mind, knowing what he saw. Anyhow, that's all I got. I honestly have never heard any other people, who have any encounters. And I really think if you're in the woods as much as we were, the odds are, eventually, you may get lucky. Let me know, in the comments below. What do you think left the prints that OP found? So I got freaked out tonight. I'm at my grandparents' house for Thanksgiving. And me and my mom decided to go on a late night drive, to just mess around and stuff. Go get something to drink and stuff. As she had just woken up, and we get into the car after exiting our house, and it's facing a hill. On that hill, in the brush, I can see something strange. It's a weird, pale white blog-ish looking thing. And it kinda looks like, if something extremely tall was crouched down, as it looked around 4 to 5 feet while in a squatting type position. And I could see it moving lightly, its head, arms, whatever. I tell my mom and she sees it too, and I think nothing of it, as the night goes on. However, as we return into the driveway, what isn't in the same spot, the mystery creature? So obviously me and her start panicking, and we run inside. Any idea of what it could be? West Virginia, United States by the way. Here are a couple comments, from this post. Josette 22 commented. There's a possibility it could be a crawler. OP responded to Josette 22. I didn't even think of that, 
you could be entirely right. It sucks it was dark outside. Feels like one of those times, where you just can't get a good look at anything. But still had me running into the house, after we got back. Let me know what you think, in the comments below. What do you think OP encountered? Was it a crawler or something else? Okay, so this happened years ago now. Probably like 5 or 6 years ago, if I had to narrow it down. I lived in a very rural area, if anybody is familiar with North Carolina. I lived in Mount Olive, very close to the county line, leaving Wayne County and going into Duplin. This little house is pretty much surrounded by woods and fields. And there were a few other houses, but not many. It was pretty quiet. One night I was in the process of getting my dogs back inside the house. They weren't paying much attention, except for one. But she wasn't making a scene or anything. I noticed something sitting down at the road, just off the edge of the property I lived in. It was small, like it most definitely wasn't tall. It was crouched, almost like it was squatting. I hate how silly it sounds, but the way it was sitting reminded me of Gollum from Lord of the Rings. It was very clearly humanoid. Its skin was so pale, it was white as paper. Its skin looked tight, like there is no loose or saggy skin at all. It wasn't wearing clothes, and it had no hair at all. It didn't have the same intimate areas as a normal person. Like looking at it, you couldn't see what its biological sex was. Its eyes were big, I couldn't see eyeballs or anything. Just large black eyes. It hadn't noticed me, so I turned on the porch light. It looked away from the dogs and looked at me. It freaked me out, so I shined my phone flashlight directly at it. I think it didn't like the light, because the second I shine a flashlight at it, directly into its face, it took off running and I haven't seen it since. Haven't seen anything else like it either. I think it was watching my dogs, and I don't think I wanna know what would have happened had I not gotten them in the house, in time. Does anyone have any ideas of what it could have been? Someone told me, it could have been one of the moon-eyed people, but I don't live in the mountains or near Appalachia. I lived six hours away from that part of the state, but even now it's just four hours instead of six. With where I currently live, not knowing what it is has bugged me ever since that night. Moon-eyed people, to my knowledge, wouldn't be in eastern North Carolina. I'm open to any suggestions I could look into and read about. Here are some of the comments, from this post. Josette 22 commented. I believe what you saw is a crawler, a mimic from the forest. Grey mares in space also commented. Go to our slash crawler sightings or our slash crawlers. It's a relatively newish thing that people are seeing more and more often. Daddy Hojo questioned. Are there any caves nearby? It could be a cave goblin or Tommy Knocker. Let me know, in the comments below. What do you think OP encountered? Was it a crawler, cave goblin, Tommy Knocker, or something more mundane? Me and my girlfriend have been dating for almost two years now. We've known each other for the majority of our lives though. She failed to tell me that her great-grandmother was an Indian shoreman until a few days ago. And it might correlate with the strange things happening around here. Let me set the scene, we live in the rural outskirts of Dallas, Texas. Where the city turns into the heavily wooded country. Around our house, we have a trail park, that people like to hike in. But at night there's a sinister feeling of dread that envelops the place. The first actual encounter we had with this creature was a few months ago. I had a full-time job at my local Sonic, at the time, and I would get off either at closing or slightly before. But either way it was pitch black, when I would walk home. And our road is a mile long, with absolutely no street lights. That night, my girlfriend decided that she was gonna meet me halfway, so I could give her, her shake and so we could walk and talk. As we met up and started talking, we made our way home. Keep in mind there's a heavily wooded tree line just left of us. We started hearing something matching our pace, in the woods. When we would stop, so would it, and the second we started walking again, so would it. Now I know animal sounds, and those were not no animal. Whatever it was, it walked on two feet. My girlfriend doesn't think it wants to hurt us though. It's had so many chances and it just won't. It's even appeared in her dreams. She's seen this thing following us, in those trees and handful of times. 
It's not just native to the trail park, it's recently relocated to our property, since we don't go to the trail park anymore. I keep hearing these strange calls coming from the woods, beside our house too. It's not quite a bird or a mammal, but instead sounds like a jumble of both. Like a fox eating a screaming bird. The most substantial evidence we've had, was by far the night it came to my girlfriend in her dreams. She cannot remember what it actually looked like, for the life of her. But she's positive it had deer antlers. We're just now piecing it all together, but I'm not quite sure what it actually is, that's talking us. Because we've tried to summon it, and it responds when we say skinwalker three times, but never tries anything. I've even whistled at night and got chased by it, but just as I thought it was gonna get me, the heavy sprinting footsteps behind me vanished, and I just went home. We're stuck between a wendigo or a skinwalker, but regardless it's not hostile. We're moving off of this old property soon. The real test is seeing if it's gonna follow us there. Here are a couple of comments, from this post. Timbro2000 commented. Just cause you didn't know everything about her family, doesn't mean she failed you. Your wording gives you away, bro. OP responded to Timbro2000. Yeah, you're right. Should have worded that sentence better. It just would have been very useful to know about it beforehand though. But that's the point of everything that's going on, we're just now piecing it all together. Trying to find out what's living in those woods. Let me know what you think, in the comments below. What do you think OP and his girlfriend encountered? Also, how wise do you think it is that OP attempted to summon the creature? This has been a crazy ride, and I'll bring you any updates, in a future video. If you've stuck with me until the end. You're amazing. If you want to catch more episodes in the Cryptid or any of my other series. Hit the subscribe button, and the notification bell, to never miss a future video. If you enjoyed this content, smash the like button. And leave a comment, down below. If you would like your encounter featured on a future video, you can send it to contacthistoryunicorn at gmail.com. You can submit anonymously, or I can give you a shout out. Just let me know your preference, in the email. Until next time, be safe out there. You never know what you might find.